Okay, so area and definitive integrals. The goal of this video is to hopefully get you to understand how to use the definitive integral and its relationship to the area of the curve. So what you see below is a curve, f of x, and um, it basically being the uh, integrated from a lower bound of a to an upper bound of b. And basically what that represents is the area underneath the curve from a to b, okay? So when you look at this and it's asking you to take the antiderivative of f of x with a bound, okay, a and b represent some numbers, this is basically asking you for the area underneath the curve between that x value of a to that x value of b. All right? So we're going to look at two examples. We're going to write down the definitive integral that gives the area of the shaded region, and then we're going to evaluate using our calculator. There is a way to do this by hand, but again, that's going to be for tomorrow. Not tomorrow, I mean for Monday, when we're doing the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here's the first one. It says f of x equals 2 minus the absolute value of x. Now we want to write down the definitive integral for that shaded region. Well, it's very simple. I need my integral symbol, and then I need my lower bound. What is the smallest x value that starts the shaded region? Negative 2. And then it goes all the way up to what x value that ends the shaded region? Positive 2. Then I write my function, which is 2 minus the absolute value of x, and then we can't forget our good old dx. Look at b. Okay? It's another curve, so we need the integral. The lower bound is negative 1. Upper bound is positive 1. Then we write in the actual function itself. And we can't forget our good old dx. But right there, there is the definitive integral that gives the area of the shaded region. Lower bound of a, upper bound of b, with the function dx. Now how we actually evaluate in our calculators is pretty cool. So you need your calculator, so go ahead and pull that up. Then you're going to press your math button, and you're going to go down to option 9, which is f-n-i-n-t, which basically, I don't know what it stands for, but it means integral. So when you click it, hopefully it pops up like this, where you literally can just type in the definitive integral. Okay? The lower bound was negative 2. The upper bound was 2. The function was 2 minus the absolute value of x. So 2 minus absolute value. Anybody know where that is? You guessed it. Press math. Go over the number, and you see ABS? Abs. Yes. Look up abs. Look at the straight lines. So then you're going to type in the x, and then of course you're going to do the x there. And by doing this, this is going to basically tell us what the area is underneath the curve when we click enter, and it's 4. Yep, it's just 4. All right, pause this video and then try to do the same thing, but this time for the second, um, the second example. Did you type it in like this? Good stuff. When you click enter, when you click enter, uh oh. Okay, I know what I did wrong. I put in a minus x squared when it should have been a plus. So let me go back and change that because what it's going to show is it's going to show that there was a um, an error message. That's why it was taking so long to process. So again, press map, number nine, lower bound, upper bound, two divided by one plus x squared. And then close off the parentheses, dx. So the area underneath that curve is pi. <laughs> Make sure you round the three significant figures for this one, okay? So the area here was 4. Here was about 3.14. Now for those of you guys who did not have that option when you went to math and then went down to 9, and it just popped up as f-n-i-n-t, with a parenthesis, it's okay. All you do is you type in your function, okay, type in your function, comma, x, comma, lower bound, comma, upper bound, close parenthesis. So for the very first example, when you went to math 9, you would have had to type in 2 minus absolute value of x, the same way we get the absolute value, math, Go over the number. That's how you get it. Comma. The comma is located right above the 7 button. X, comma again. 
The lower bound, which was negative 2, comma, upper bound, which is 2, close parenthesis. And when you do that, you still will get the same answer of 4. Now, one property of the definitive integral is what you see here, where basically you have the integral from a to b of f of x equals the integral from a to c, f of x, dx, plus the integral from c to b, f of x, dx. This is what happens when basically your area is separated by your x-axis like, like it is here at 2. So you have this area up here, and then you have this area down here. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to do the integral from negative 2 to positive 4. You can't do that because then it won't give you an accurate representation of the actual shaded region that's mixed with the, the, green, of, the green and pink color. So how would you actually write this? Well, if the function was y equals negative 2 plus 4, well, then it's simple. You do the integral symbol. A. A represents the very, very lower bound, which is about negative 2. Then to the point where it actually splits the two regions to 2. Of your function, negative 2x plus 4 dx plus from that split point of 2 all the way up to about 3, 4, 5, 6 of your function again, dx. This is what you would have to do in your calculator to actually find the area, okay? Now, one thing you do have to be aware of is that if the area is below the x-axis, like how this section is right here, you're not going to add it, you're going to subtract it. So anytime the area is underneath the x-axis, you subtract it. So this actually would be a, oops, this would actually be a minus, okay? So this can actually go either way, plus or minus. Let's look at an example. It says the graph of f consists of a line, of line segments as shown. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 10 of f of x using geometric formula. Well, here we go. Here's 0, goes all the way up to 10. We have area that is split up. We have this area down here, and then we have this area right up here at the top. Now it says use geometric formula for a reason. Do you see your two shapes? You guessed it. You got a triangle, and you got a trapezoid. You remember your formulas to find the area of those? I hope so. To find the area of the triangle is one half base times height. Okay. Your base is 5 units long, your height is 6 units long, and technically it's negative 6 because it's below the x-axis, all right? But I'm not going to put that negative in there. I just have to remember that when I actually find my area, it's going to be negative because it's below the x-axis. So my area for that is negative 15. Yes, areas can be negative now. We're outside of geometry, we're in calculus now, you guys. For a trapezoid, the formula is 1 half h, b1 plus b2. The height is 6. Your two bases are 3 and 5. So when you take half of 6 and times 8, <coughs> you get 24, a positive 24 because it's above the x-axis. So to find my area of my definitive integral, which is based from 0 to 10, I'm going to add negative 15 to 24 to get an answer of 9. So the answer is 9. 